So this week we've got a very special project that I've been working on. It's kind of taken over the entire house. In fact, it's gotten so crazy, people have been sending us all kinds of things and we've been buying a lot of stuff, but I had to build at least one thing. So we're gonna build a crib and this is probably one of the hardest, most involved projects I've ever done. But let's be honest, my wife has been doing the hard stuff. So the first step for this crib build, uh, we've already got some lumber that was actually dimensioned uh, on three sides uh, from the sawmill. So I can actually just get going and get everything rough cut. So you guys are watching me rough cut. We're gonna do all of the horizontal and vertical pieces first. So like the legs and the rails. This was an inch and three quarters thickness. Uh, actually the full thickness I'll be able to use. And so uh, the maximum thickness is gonna be that inch and three quarters um, that is on the legs. And then the rails, the horizontal rails are going to be an inch and a half. So uh, I get those cut. Then with the crosscut sled, I am cutting it. Uh, so I'm making sure I get a square edge on the ends. And then to get everything to the right thickness and smooth it all out, I'm taking it through the planer. All right, so now that we've got all of the pieces planed down and cut pretty much into the dimensions, we're gonna be working on the mortise and tenon. I've recently gotten a little drill press and I'm actually using the drill press to rough out most of the material. and then uh, going back with a chisel and getting that square and everything good to go. Now I'm using the table saw to actually make the tenon. I'm using a dado stack to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, and so I'm gonna do that for all the pieces, lots of mortise and tenons on this. So that's gonna be the process that I'm doing throughout the entire mortise and tenons whenever I need to put them in there. We are working on the back top piece. Uh, and so this is going to be a wider piece and this is going to be a double mortise and tenon. I've heard that the reason you do a double mortise and tenon is because it helps with movement uh, as the temperature changes. So you've got less material, so there's actually less that it can move. Um, so you do two of those to help keep that down. So you guys can see that I am cutting the tenons off right now. So this is a back rail and we're actually doing a double mortise because we're gonna have a piece going in kind of like that. And so we are working on getting these flushed up and I actually drew these dimensions right off of this one. So it would fit in real snug. So now that we've got the crib put together, we're gonna to be working on the rails. They are two inches wide. There's gonna be about a half inch mortise, just like this, but there's gonna be going all along the sides. And they are just gonna be three quarter inches thick. And you guys can see we are cutting all of those out right now. And then we are going back and cutting the mortises and then drilling a ton of holes. It's gonna wind up being 84 holes between all of these pieces. So now with this initial hole cut right on the center line that is a half inch, what we are going to do is use those edges to reference off the rest of the lines. Just to give me more guidelines so I know how the mortises are going to sit. So now that we have all the holes cut on this piece, what I'm doing is labeling each end. So this is hole 31, this is hole 30, this is hole 32. And then on the corresponding piece, this is 30, even though this is going into hole 31. And then on the flip side, I label it as well so I know which rail. And then once I've got everything labeled, I am basically just going through these lines and cleaning up the edges.
All right, so now that we've got most of the pieces rounded over, we are going to be working on getting this dry fit and then gluing the panels together. You're gonna to see us lay this out, then put in the glue. And what we're gonna be doing is putting four panels together, so the front, the back, and the sides. And the very last piece that we're going to add to the crib before we get to the actual base, we're gonna do a little bit of a curb molding that's actually gonna go on the top of the back panel. And I've already cut a test piece, so you guys can see that kind of curve right there is what we're gonna be going for. The actual molding won't be this big, but it'll come out like this and we'll round it over, and that's gonna be actually on the top back of the crib. So, we're actually cutting this out on the table saw. So I need to leave about an inch and three quarters for the shoulder because that's going to be what actually attaches this to the back of the crib. So I've already put this all the way up the distance where I actually want the cove to happen. Now if I actually took this through the table saw just like this, I would probably cut my hand off or do something really dumb. So um, what I'm going to do is put an auxiliary fence on and so I'm going to tape right around where this guy is going to slide through so that I've got a spot to reference this off of because when I actually cut, I'm only going to take just a little bit at a time to make it a lot safer. So we've got the coast cut and then we're gonna split it right down the middle. So then I actually have two hopefully identical pieces uh, molding once I trim this piece off. And then we'll round over the corners and we'll be good to go. Now that we've got this sanded down and we've got the trim piece attached right here with the cove, we are going to paint this. You may be cringing when you hear that I say that I'm actually painting this, but to go with the nursery, we actually need this white. If it makes you feel any better, this is actually soft maple, it's not hard maple, so from the get-go, we knew this was gonna be painted. We're using an oil-based primer to get it ready, and then we're coming back with hopefully a pretty nice uh, white enamel paint that is going to be going on uh, the rest of it. got some clamps on this to pull this in close and now what we're going to do is right here we're going to drill some holes and then put some dowels through so right now you can see me cutting uh, the, that dowel rod with the table saw uh, i'm getting this cut and then we're putting a flag on the drill bit so now we're putting a hole through the tenons and the faces so that will lock it in we're going to be putting in the rails which are actually going to hold the mattress up. We already figured out the spot we're gonna have this on the crib. So I have a couple little guide pieces that I'm gonna rest this on. All right, so I already put the metal pin in on both sides and then we're just going to line it up on this and drop it in. So this thing was a blast to put together. This was probably the biggest build that I've ever done and definitely the most important. A few things if I was gonna do it over again, I probably would have done the mortise and tenons differently on the rails. Uh, probably would have just used dowels, made it a lot quicker. For these guys, I actually would have used a wooden screw. So then I could have backed it out a lot easier. If I wanna dismantle this to get this out of the room or to convert it into a toddler bed, I'm actually gonna have to drill into these pins and then pull them out. So I would have done this a little bit different, uh, but it's definitely gonna work for now. Also, I wasn't thinking through the color scheme of the room before we decided on the wood. Uh, and so if I wanted to leave it a natural color, we probably would have gone darker. Uh, so it would be more expensive, but we've done something like walnut instead of using soft maple for this. All right, if you guys like this build, I'm thinking about putting plans together. So if you're interested in that, there's gonna be a link down below. Uh, click that, let me know you're interested. And if enough people are interested, I'll go ahead and make those. So if this is a good while after this comes out, uh, there could be live plans down below. Also, if you guys like this channel and you haven't subscribed, please do that. That would be absolutely amazing. Going into 2018, my goal is to put out at least one video a month. But each week I'm putting out a interview over on the Make or Break show where we chat with makers like Jimmy Teresta and David Picciuto. So if you guys are working in your shop and you want something to listen to, that is a great one to check out. Also, give me a big like on this video if you guys liked it. And if you see ways to improve, leave a comment. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.